At 10.5 square kilometers, this man-made island can withstand earthquakes and typhoons, but is built to sink. This is Oddworld. Kansai International Airport, Osaka, Japan. The first airport built on reclaimed land in the ocean opened in 1994. It's the second largest artificial island in the world, as mentioned in my video on the largest artificial island in the world. But this island is very different from the Flavopolder. Why was it built? How was it built? And why is it sinking? Japan has very mountainous terrain and a high population density. So there's very little room to build something flat and wide, such as an airport. The old mainland airport of Osaka, Itami International Airport, slap bang in the middle of the city, could not expand and was quickly reaching maximum capacity. Looking for a new spot to build a new airport started as early as 1968, when engineers proposed building a new airport in Osaka Bay. The big benefit of building an airport in the middle of the bay is the prevention of noise pollution and land acquisition disputes. Building this artificial island would be a big technical challenge. Due to the possibility of storm surges of up to 3 meters, a depth of 18 meters and 20 meters of Holocene clay below that, which is basically 70% water. Add frequent earthquakes to the list and you've got yourself an engineering challenge. After a lengthy design process, construction began in 1987, starting with stabilizing the seabed as much as possible. Sand was driven into the clay seabed. The sand absorbed the water in the clay, reducing its ability to compress. Two million of these sand columns were installed in the island's base. When this was done, a seawall was constructed creating the outline of the island. Two mountains were excavated, 21 million cubic meters for the entire circumference of the island. It was then filled in with 430 million cubic meters of rock. 10,000 workers and 10 million work hours in just three years were put into this project using 80 ships. Just staggering numbers. The new island surface was a good 35 meters above the sea floor. On top of it, runways, taxiways and the world's longest continuous terminal was built. Designed by Renzo Piano, the terminal is 1.7 kilometers long. But because of the massive weight of two excavated mountains, rock, and new buildings put on top of a clay seabed, the island was expected to sink or settle more accurately. Estimates were made, although they turned out to be somewhat optimistic, and the island started to sink faster than expected. Runways, taxiways and structures have been raised several times over the years by about 20 centimeters. And the buildings were constructed with the ability to raise them on their foundations. Despite the sinking, the project was a success and a second runway was built between 2003 and 2007. Kansai was a watershed moment for this type of artificial island construction and a solution to many cities that could only expand onto water. Nowadays, Japan has a few of these floating airports such as Nagoya Centraire, Kobe Airport and Kyushu Airport. But Kansai Airport continues to sink by about 6 centimeters per year. In early 2019, it was announced that the first major work on the airport would begin raising the seawalls and the runway on the first island by increments of 10 centimeters up to one whole meter. What will the effects of climate change have on islands like this in the future? Will it remain financially sensible to keep raising this island? Only time will tell. Subscribe for more videos like this and if you like this video, please let me know by clicking the like button below. Thanks to my patrons for making this video possible and if you want to get your name in the credits, weekly exclusive behind the scenes looks, previews and patron only Q&As, sign up at patreon.com slash sepvandenbrink. And let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching, see you soon.